13 Week Theater is supported by Patreon. Subscribe now and get exclusive early access. The Monkees aired on NBC from 1966 through 1968. Created to cash in on Beatlemania, the show cast four actors, two of whom were actually talented musicians and all of whom could sing, to play a young, struggling band. The four notoriously were not allowed to play any instruments on their earliest recordings and became derisively known as the Prefab Four. While Monkey Mania died out relatively quickly, the four eventually broke the creative shackles that were placed on them and continued recording and touring off and on in different combinations for decades. In 1986, in honor of the show's and the band's 20th anniversary, MTV aired a marathon of the show's episodes, which fueled interest in the band by a whole new generation. Inspired by the band's resurgence and by another MTV success, the BBC's early 1980s punk sitcom The Young Ones, producer Steve Blauner, who had worked on the original Monkey show in the 1960s, thought the time might be right to revive the concept. Prefab 4? Meet the Refab 4. Blauner signed up with LBS, the company that had syndication rights for the original show, and Coca-Cola Telecommunications, the same studio that brought you the new Gidget and What's Happening Now. Uh, gee, do you sense a pattern here? To create the new monkeys. Blauner's original idea was to hire a pre-existing band to become the new monkeys. He approached the Elvis Brothers, who had had a minor hit a few years earlier with Fire in the City. The Elvis Brothers turned the offer down, not wanting to lose their own identity behind an artificial band. Eventually, Blounder decided to hold open auditions to find his band, the same thing that had worked so well in the 1960s. The four who made the cut were Marty Ross, a singer and songwriter who had been a member of the 1980s band The Wakes, comedian and musician Konstantinos Dino Kovas, singer and guitarist Jared Chandler, and songwriter and guitarist Larry Staltis. Dino's occasional comedy partner Steve Hanya contributed recurring segments. Best Mata, best known as Sarah Connor's roommate Ginger in The Terminator, was cast as Rita, the waitress in the diner that the boys had in their house instead of a kitchen. Gordon Osheim was cast as the boys' butler Manfred, and Lenny Godfrey as the voice and lips of Helen, the boys' supercomputer. The four band members were rushed into the studio to record a total of 28 songs. 11 of them were selected for the band's debut album, and the single was released with the new show's theme song as its B-side. The fact that the four boys were talented musicians was evident from the beginning. Among the songs recorded for the show were extremely faithful covers of hits by Marshall Crenshaw and Tom Cochran and Red Ryder. A song co-written by Larry Staltis. And perhaps as a consolation prize for not being the show's band. A cover of an Elvis Brothers song was thrown into the mix. The rest of the selections were pretty much late 80s power pop. Publicity for the band and the show was relentless. Warner Brothers released the first album, or at least they thought it was going to be the first album, from the show in August of 1987, and Coca-Cola had an ad and promotion blitz, including ads in movie theaters. Hey, 
Young man, I won't have that kind of behavior in this house. Dino! Oh, oh. June, June burns me. Now this is different. Dino must have broken this and inhaled the stuff. Oh. Now he thinks he's June Farnsworth. TV mom. The deadly cook. Bon appetit. A new monkey. Sunday afternoon at 4.30 on TV One. My name is Helen, and I live with these four rock stars in a house you're just never going to believe. The New Monkeys debuted in first-run syndication the week of September 14, 1987, and was an immediate flop. So, what happened? And to be blunt, except for how the two bands were assembled, the Monkeys and the New Monkeys had almost nothing in common. Fans of the 1960s sound from the original band were not necessarily going to enjoy the new band's power pop and vice versa. It also didn't help the original Monkees put out their own album of late 80s style pop around the same time, which also flopped. Just like the bands, the two shows had little in common with each other. While the original show had the Monkees going out in the world getting into adventures, the new Monkees lived in a giant boombox with their own diner, butler, and supercomputer and almost never ventured outside, well, except for music videos. And while the original show could get surreal at times, the new show was a terrifying Hieronymus Bosch fever dream. Hey, you guys. You all look gray. I just wondered how he did that. It was easy, Jared. Those three elements contain all of Earth's scientific properties. Yeah, but how'd you get the speakers? Whoa! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? As you can probably see, watching my lips, something is terribly wrong with tonight's show. Well, look, this here's my wife, Mabel. Ain't she pretty? <laughs> you know, my old mammy told me, son, don't go running around with no computers, but I love her same as the day I... Dad, Dad, wake up! I hope he's okay. Golly, what are we gonna do? Maybe we should just take a nap for a little while. Uh, great idea, moron. Yeah, let's just take a nap. Oh, boys? Is that my boys I hear talking? Hey, look! Mommy! Oh, it's so good to see you boys. It owed a lot more to the young ones than the monkeys, which meant that it couldn't capitalize on the current monkeys' nostalgia to bolster its audience. And, of course, the new band inherited the reputation of the originals. The fact that the Monkees didn't play any instruments on their first album was because the producer wouldn't allow them to. But the tractors thought that it was because they were talentless. The new Monkees did play on their own album, but they still managed to be tarred with the same brush as the original band. Ratings were poor, as were ad sales, and affiliates started dropping off. Before long, reality set in. Sweetie pie, forget it. You're a history, baby. The ratings are down. You've taken your last lunch, bubbler. You're finished. True. Cancel. Fini. Oh. Wilbert. Gee, Miss Cleaver, that's some nice wine you got. He's dead, Jim. I'm a doctor, not a mechanic. Baba, no. No, see, no, see. Oh. Back off. Dino. Whoa! I had the weirdest dream. We know. Man, and While Coca-Cola and LBS had committed to 22 episodes, they decided not to produce the back nine. While a handful of affiliates continued with reruns for a few more weeks, the new monkeys were officially canceled the week of December 7th, 1987. In the years since the show went off the air, the band's reputation has undergone a transformation. 
Whether as a curiosity from their childhood or an ironic appreciation of something an earlier generation had disposed of, or just a so-bad-it's-good attitude, people started rediscovering the new Monkees show and their music. This eventually led to a new music video being released for Some Day Some Way and a reunion concert in 2019 with a special appearance by original monkey Mickey Dolenz. As more people rediscover the new monkeys, maybe they'll live up to their name by proving to be too good for the TV show that created them and building a huge fan base in their own right. After all, if Mickey, Peter, and Mike could chart in 2016, what's to stop Marty, Jared, Dino, and Larry from having the surprise hit of 2037? Monkey.